Hello, today I'll be discussing an approach to cough. I'll be combining acute and chronic cough into one general discussion, but we'll highlight along the way the points in which these two differ. The best diagnostic framework for the etiologies of cough is a combination of anatomic region and organ system, in which the first category is usually referred to as H-E-E-N-T for head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat. However, in this context, it makes more sense to relabel this as upper airway. There are four major etiologies of cough in the upper airway. First is an acute upper respiratory infection, also known colloquially as a common cold, which is caused by viruses. There is also another entity formerly called upper airway cough syndrome, but more commonly referred to as post nasal drip. This is an umbrella term that includes a variety of chronic conditions with overlapping presentations and treatments, including both allergic rhinitis, also known as hay fever, and non-allergic rhinitis. Chronic sinusitis also falls into this category. The conditions under upper airway cough syndrome all cause subacute to chronic nasal congestion, runny nose, also known as rhinorrhea, sneezing, sinus pressure, and of course, cough. Their underlying mechanisms differ, but they can be difficult to distinguish clinically. The terminology and subclassification of upper airway cough syndrome also lacks current consensus. Additionally, under the general category of upper airway is something called post-viral cough, which is when a viral infection triggers a temporary version of either upper airway cough syndrome or less commonly cough variant asthma. And last and most rare, is laryngeal cancer. The next general category is pulmonary. Conditions here include acute bronchitis, which is usually viral and has a lot of clinical overlap with upper respiratory infections. The small minority of acute bronchitis that is caused by bacteria are predominantly caused by pertussis, mycoplasma, and chlamydia pneumoniae. Under pulmonary, we also have pneumonia, which includes not just bacterial, but also includes fungal and mycobacterial pneumonias as well. And as previously mentioned, we also have cough variant asthma, which is just like asthma, but the predominant symptom is an episodic allergy mediated cough rather than wheezing or dyspnea. The chronic bronchitis subtype of COPD and bronchiectasis both cause a chronic productive cough too. There's also lung cancer, interstitial lung disease and aspiration including aspiration of a foreign body, most commonly seen in young children. The next category is GI. The only notable entity here is also one whose categorization is a bit confusing, laryngopharyngeal reflux and or GERD. In laryngopharyngeal reflux, gastric contents uh, reflux above the esophagus, up above the upper esophageal sphincter, and into the larynx and pharynx. Whereas in classic GERD, gastric contents reflux past the lower esophageal sphincter, but remain within the esophagus. Both situations can cause a cough. The confusing part is whether laryngeopharyngeal reflux is a subtype of gastroesophageal reflux, whether they are commonly associated but distinct entities, or in my view as a non-ENT expert, whether they represent different clinical presentations that may or may not coexist within a single heterogeneous condition. An analogy here might be the chronic bronchitis and emphysema subtypes of COPD. But be aware that there is not clear consensus on this. However, anytime you hear a clinician talk about GERD as one of the most common causes of chronic cough, be aware that they may be combining these two related diagnoses under the same heading. In the miscellaneous category, the most common etiology is a side effect of a class of blood pressure medication called ACE inhibitors. The reported incidence of this side effect is all over the place, as low as 1% and as high as one third of all patients on the medications. Other miscellaneous etiologies are heart failure and mitral valve disease, which I actually hesitate to list here because it subsequently shows up in students' differential diagnoses of patients presenting only with a cough, despite heart failure and mitral valve patients rarely presenting with cough as the predominant symptom. It's much more likely for such patients to present with dyspnea and cough, or lower extremity edema and cough, not often as cough by itself. The miscellaneous category also includes the genetic conditions of ciliary dyskinesia, in which the airways lack normal mucociliary clearance, 
and a variety of hereditary immunodeficiencies. And last, we have somatic cough syndrome, previously known as psychogenic cough, and tick cough, previously known as habit cough. Unfortunately, as has already come up in this framework, there is also not a clear consensus on how these last two conditions are defined, diagnosed, or even distinguished from one another. When considering these many etiologies, of course, not all are equally common, and most preferentially cause either an acute or a chronic presentation. The most common causes of an acute cough include an upper respiratory tract infection, post-viral cough, acute bronchitis, and pneumonia. The most common causes of a chronic cough include upper airway cough syndrome, asthma, laryngeal pharyngeal reflux slash GERD, ACE inhibitors, and among smokers, COPD. So next, how do we evaluate a patient presenting with cough? First, consider what's relevant in the history, the duration and timing of the cough. One of the most common characteristics used in describing a cough is productive versus non-productive of phlegm. You should inquire as to the presence of other symptoms, particularly fever, dyspnea, chest pain, hemoptysis, heartburn, rhinorrhea, nasal congestion, and weight loss. Ask the patient about a history of chronic lung disease, immunosuppression, smoking, and use of an ACE inhibitor. Beyond the history, obviously assess the vitals. HEENT and pulmonary exams will obviously be relevant, as will cardiac auscultation and assessment of the JVP. Lab tests are usually not helpful in most causes of a cough, particularly a chronic one, but consider checking a CBC if any form of infection is being considered. And last, consider a chest x-ray. With all this information, we enter the diagnostic algorithm with an initial question of whether or not to order an x-ray. Ordering an x-ray in a patient presenting with a cough depends on two very general factors. Is the cough chronic? And are there any red flags for serious pathology present? If yes to either of these, a chest x-ray is warranted. What are the red flags in a patient with cough? Well, concurrent dyspnea, hemoptysis, chest pain, weight loss, immunosuppression, a significant smoking history, if the patient is elderly or otherwise at risk of aspiration, if they have tachypnea, hypoxemia, and or an abnormal cardiac or pulmonary exam, or if they are presenting with sepsis. If an x-ray is ordered and found to be abnormal, it should of course be further worked up as indicated. Abnormalities that might be seen include focal alveolar opacifications consistent with pneumonia or aspiration, diffuse interstitial opacities consistent with ILD, hyperinflation and flattening of the diaphragms consistent with COPD, or a lung nodule or masses consistent with cancer. For most patients presenting with a cough, particularly most patients with a chronic cough, the chest x-ray will be unremarkable. This will make serious pathology relatively unlikely, not impossible, just unlikely, and even if it's not likely to be serious, it's still important to diagnose correctly. So work up any other symptoms and signs if they are present. And otherwise, consider etiologies listed in this box to the right. Some etiologies that would be placed in this box do have confirmatory diagnostic tests, but in practice, unless otherwise specified, most doctors opt instead to recommend a diagnostic trial of empiric treatment for the most likely diagnoses based on the clinically present factors. This is because the empiric treatments in question are usually benign, and the confirmatory diagnostic tests are either cumbersome, expensive, or have suboptimal positive and negative predictive values. If the cough has been present for less than one week and is accompanied by other upper respiratory symptoms, the etiology is likely a viral URI, in which case symptomatic treatment can be offered. The only consideration here is during flu season, when a nasal swab for influenza should be considered particularly if the patient also has a fever. If the duration of cough is less than three weeks and the patient has no other notable symptoms, the patient probably has acute bronchitis for which antibiotics are usually not indicated unless the patient has suspected pertussis. If the cough is acute and occurring either in a smoker or in a person known to have COPD, consider a possible COPD exacerbation. If there is no more likely diagnosis, Consider empiric treatment with prednisone, 
inhaled bronchodilators such as albuterol and ipratropium, and plus or minus antibiotics. If the cough is subacute and was preceded by URI symptoms that are now resolved, that's probably a post-viral cough, but pertussis should also be considered. If the cough is chronic and accompanied by nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, sneezing, and or sinus pressure, consider empiric treatment for upper airway cough syndrome, which can include antihistamines, decongestants, and or nasal steroids, depending on the suspected subtype. If it's chronic, most prominent at night, and accompanied by heartburn, treat empirically for laryngopharyngeal reflux and GERD. Treatment consists of a combination of proton pump inhibitors to reduce stomach acid, and lifestyle modifications which reduce reflux, including weight loss, smoking cessation, reducing alcohol intake, and not eating within several hours of going to bed. Keep in mind that patients with laryngopharyngeal reflux can also present without classic GERD symptoms, making their diagnosis more challenging. Although associated hoarseness is also a common symptom of laryngopharyngeal reflux and can suggest a diagnosis, hoarseness lasting more than a few weeks can also be a symptom of a laryngeal or vocal cord tumor and should therefore prompt an evaluation by an ENT specialist. If the cough is chronic, non-productive, is triggered by exercise or cold temperature, and is associated with wheezing, treat empirically for cough variant asthma with albuterol and steroid inhalers. If it's chronic, occurring in a smoker, and associated with diminished lung sounds and or hyperresonance to percussion, check PFTs to evaluate for COPD. And last, the use of an ACE inhibitor, particularly if the cough is non-productive, suggests the possibility of a drug side effect, and switching the patient to an angiotensin receptor blocker is usually done. Among those patients with a chronic cough, if it fails to improve despite a course of empiric treatment as a diagnostic trial, that would be the time to check a chest x-ray if not done so already, and to either try a course of empiric treatment for the next most likely diagnosis, or to proceed with more testing, such as a methacholine challenge to diagnose asthma, and esophageal pH monitoring to diagnose reflux. Depending on the severity of the cough, an ENT referral might be appropriate at this point as well. One last point is that if the patient is also presenting with hemoptysis, which is the symptom of coughing up blood, that warrants a similar yet distinct diagnostic workup, as such patients are more likely to have serious pathology requiring specialist referral. So please consider checking out my other video on an approach to hemoptysis. That's an overview of an approach to cough. Key takeaway points for this topic. The most common etiologies of an acute cough are an upper respiratory infection, post-viral cough, acute bronchitis, and pneumonia. The most common etiologies of a chronic cough are upper airway cough syndrome, colloquially known as post-nasal drip, cough variant asthma, COPD, laryngopharyngeal reflux slash GERD, and an ACE inhibitor side effect. There is a lack of consensus regarding the naming and categorization of many cough etiologies. Patients presenting with a cough should have a chest x-ray if either the cough is chronic or if it's associated with a red flag for serious pathology. If serious pathology is felt to be unlikely, empiric treatment of the most probable diagnosis is an acceptable alternative to cumbersome, costly, insensitive, or nonspecific diagnostic testing.